morning, my brothers and sisters. We know that this is the day that the Lord has made. And we, born of his blood, we who know something about what the grace of God can do, we who walk with him and talk with him every day, we will rejoice so the world don't understand why we rejoice. But if God has saved you, and if God has turned your direction around, those of us who have been blessed by him, we rejoice. See, so if you don't have the spirit in you, they don't understand. They can't identify why we rejoice. For God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in his spirit as and in his truth. This is Historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, 540 West Maxwell Street, Lexington, Kentucky. For we just overcome with joy because Jesus, he fills our cup. And not only he fills our cup, but it overflows with joy and with love. Amen and amen. Our scripture reading, it is taken out of the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21. And it reads as follows. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy and divine word. Just give me two seconds so we can allow some folks to sit down. Amen. Join me in prayer. O thou who art eternal, hallowed be your name. Lifted up is your name. Glorious is thy name. How magnificent is thy name. How lovely is thy name. Father, those of us that know you, according to your word, we can, we can, we can say, Abba, Father, which means daddy. For not only you are our God, but you are our heavenly father. So we come to you, Lord, empty before a flowing fountain. We come to you, Father, realizing we have nothing in us. There is nothing worthy in us except that we have your only begotten son living, dwelling within us. So we say thank you. Because of Jesus, we can come to you boldly. We have nothing to offer. We can't, we can't come to you boldly. But we have Christ in us. And we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We can come to you. Because Jesus covers a multitude of sins. And we are thankful. Father, be with this world. There's chaos going. There's still the pandemic. It hasn't gone anywhere. We have the situation in, in, in Ukraine and Russia. We just pray, Lord, that you give the West. Those of us that say that we're not fearful of the Russians. But it seems like that's all we're showing. 
is but fear. We have to get into your word, Lord. And if our cause has been given by your spirit, we will go forth in your name. Just like David did. We go face you, Russia. We face you, Putin, in the name of our God, in the name of the God of Israel. Father, strengthen us in our homeland. The balance on the street is every day. We pray for our, for our teenagers who have to endure so much. We pray, Lord, for every sick and shut in. We ask you, Lord, to be with the Emerson. We understand that. Our brother had to take Sister Alice to get her looked at. Strengthen her and strengthen him. These things we pray and ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. My sister, my brothers, we're going to have our church announcement and welcome by our church clerk. Sister Karen Taylor. Good morning. We are blessed that you have chosen to worship with us today and pray you feel the sweet, sweet spirit in this grand old place. Again, welcome to Historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Our announcements for the week are as follows. We congratulate Judge Kataji Brown Jackson as the first African American female U.S. Supreme Court Justice. Let us pray for her safe and successful service. Each week, our prayer and teachers meeting is held on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. and our Bible school is held on Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Zoom information for these weekly activities can be found in the weekly church email. The Young Adults Bible Class Zoom meeting will be held Wednesday, April the 13th, 2022 at 7 o'clock p.m. Zoom information for this meeting can also be found in the weekly church email. There will be an in-person Good Friday worship service this coming Friday, April the 15th, at 5 o'clock p.m., the signs of the church will bring the seven last words uttered by Jesus from the cross, and the second ordinance of the church, the Lord's Supper, will be observed for the month of April. This service will also be streamed live on the church YouTube channel and Facebook page. Your 2021 church contribution statements may be requested by email or by calling the church office. This information can also be found in the church email. Our prayers and condolences go out to the family of Sister Patricia Cruz in Raleigh, North Carolina, who passed. She, is, she was the cousin of Sister Anna Tatman and the family of Brother Isaiah Lee of Richmond, Virginia, who passed. He was the grandson of Sister Patricia Level. Please remember our pulpit committee, sick, shut-in, and bereaved members and friends and our government officials in your prayers. The Fayette County COVID-19 community level remains at low. However, please continue to follow the CDC and local governmental guidelines could continue to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus variant and to minimize your risk of being infected. God bless you and have a safe week. Amen. 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 so blessed to have our director of music, Brother Marion Shockley. He's by himself, but you know, you watch those old westerns and when men on horseback were approaching, you saw all that dust cloud of dust in the air. 
So it's kind of hard to tell whether it's one coming or it's a whole posse coming. So we see the cloud of dust for now. But he's playing by himself. So it's just one individual is causing this cloud of dust. So God bless you, Brother Shockley. God bless you. Give him a hand. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's okay. You can keep clapping for the Lord. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. I said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. I'm so glad to see everyone's smiling faces. If you look around, you, you see God's mercy and God's favor and, and his blessings. To, to be able to wake up this morning and to come into the house of God and to worship in unity. It is such an honor, it is such an honor that God has chose me to be on the wake up list this morning. It is such an honor. And Lord, I just want to say thank you. Come on, can you rest on your feet? And when you rest on your feet, get your mind on God and just begin to offer up a vertical praise straight to the Father. Come on, come on, offer up a vertical praise. Come on, worship him, worship him. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to thank God for another day, for his mercy, for his grace for being an awesome God. He's been faithful. Ah, uh, he's been kind. Ah, uh, he's protected us. We went all week last week dealing with life's troubles, ups and downs. We all go through different things. We all we all have our own issues. But God has made us a promise that he was going to be there with us. Oftentimes you may hear that some people ask God to, to meet us somewhere. But the Bible I read says that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Ah, uh, anybody know that God is with you always. Ah, uh, he doesn't have to meet you there because he goes with you. Wherever you may go, wherever you may step foot, God is with you. Ah, he's there to be your peace. He's there to regulate your mind. He's there to protect you and see that you get to, to point B from point A safely. And for that, I thank God. Can we clap our hands in this place? Hallelujah. If you don't mind, look around at somebody and say, we serve a great God. We serve a great God. <laughs> Come on, mean it. Say, we serve a great God. We serve a great God. I want to sing a song that talks about what God is to me. Uh, this song says he's been faithful. He's been holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been awesome. He's been righteous. Reverend Herb, this one's for you. I need everybody to get into the posture of worship. Righteous you are 
and righteous you'll be. Come on, I need some help today. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing it again. Oh, I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. You are so righteous to me. I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. And righteous you are. And righteous you'll be. God. I got another one for you. Oh, I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. You are so awesome to me. Oh, oh, oh I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. And awesome you are. And awesome you'll be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I sing it again? Oh, Lord, I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. You are so awesome to me. Oh, 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 I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. And awesome you are. And awesome you'll be. Hallelujah. I got one more for you. Oh, I call you all that Your name is all that You have been all that to me Oh, oh I call you all that Your name is all that All that you are And all that you'll be I'm going to sing it one more time Come on, lift it up in this place I call you all that I call you all that your name is all that you have been all that to me. Oh, 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 I call you all that. Your name is all that. All that you are and all that you'll be. Now come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, if he's been all that. Come on, righteous, holy, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Our God has been faithful. And we thank him today. We thank him for being all of that. We thank him for being all of that. And today we worship him for being all of that. Come on, come on, look at somebody and say, I worship him for being all of that. Yeah, yeah, he's been all of that to me.
to an end Oh no, they are new every morning Oh new every morning Oh great is thy faithful Faithfulness, oh Lord, oh Lord Great is thy faithful can we lift our hands in this place? brothers and sisters he loves you he loved you enough to wake you up yeah he loved you enough to regulate your mind yeah he loved you enough to save your soul he loved you enough to wash you in the blood oh, oh, anybody thank God for the blood I know it's not the Lord's Supper but but God loves us God loves us he loves us for God so loved the world yeah, yeah, we were once in the world. We were once in the world. We were once in the world. And, and when we were in the world, God loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'm just so glad that Jesus loves us. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. come with the spirit of expectancy there are some things that you may have been praying for there are some things that you may have asked God for we're not with you in your secret closet we're not with you 
when you have those conversations late at night with God, asking him why and, and for what and, and why does this have to happen to us and why my family? You know those type of conversations where, where you really don't know what to say, but, but, but God says that he understands your groaning and he understands your tears when you just, when you just open up your mouth and say, God, I need you. Uh, every day and every hour God I need you not just me but my children need you in and my children's children need you in and every time I go into my secret closet and I pray for mercy it's not just for me but it's for my children and my children's children and every time I ask the God for grace and it's not just for me but it's for my children and my children's children every God every time I ask God every time I ask God for forgiveness it's not just for me but it's for my children and my children's children come on I need some people in here that that know that whatever we pray is not just for us for us but for our children and and God God knows that every time we pray that we're praying for something to happen generationally we're praying for something to happen generationally. God, don't just protect me and my house. But God, look after my children and, and my loved ones and, and even my godparents and my grandparents. And, and come on, is anybody with me? And, and my cousins. And come on, somebody got to be with me. God is a God of mercy and he, he, he looks high. He, he sits high and looks low, and, and I'm just so glad for his presence. I'm just so glad to be in his presence. People of God, people of God, sit in his presence. Sit in his presence, and I'm crazy enough to believe that after we get done with our songs and our worship and our praise and the sermon and the rhema word comes, that there are some things that we've been asking and God is going to do it for us. God is going to do it for us. Who knows, some people may go home today and, and call Pleasant Green and say, and say, Sunday after service, God has met me where I was. <laughs> God has met me in my very situation. Oh, oh. God has met me, met me in my, in my very state. And he has shown mercy. He has shown mercy. He has shown mercy. I can hear God saying, lo, I will be with you always. Lo, I will be with you always. Even. <laughs> till the end lo I will be with you always I love you Jesus I worship and adore you and I just want to tell you I know I'm not by myself that I love you more than anything a spirit of worship I love you Jesus oh Lord and I worship and adore you and I, and I just want to tell you every day Lord I just want to tell you even in my darkest hour, Lord, I just want to tell you, come what may, Lord, I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything, more than anything. Can you truthfully say that you love him? 
when things are going right? Can you say that you love them when you don't understand? Can you say that you love them when your kids aren't acting right? Uh oh. Can you say that you love them? Can you say that you love them when you don't have peace in your storm? But today, if not ever, Lord, I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Lord, and I worship and adore you. We're moving on. And I just want to tell you and I just want to tell you Lord if I forget to tell you tomorrow God I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything come on clap your hands in this place is the second Sunday and I'm a creature of habit so we're going to move our, our Lord's Supper from today to as Sister Karen read before you we're going to move it to Good Friday for our Good Friday services so I have to remind myself to, to give the benediction because normally per scripture benediction does not follow Amen. The sermon that precedes the supper. Amen. Amen. Just for a moment, brief moment, if you will, turn with me to the gospel card in the loop. The gospel card in the loop. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Verse 3 being the emphasis. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil may the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy and divine word we want to look at for a subject for a title 
What is in a day? What is in a day? We need to understand that there is a difference between, between the model prayer and the Lord's prayer. Many times when we gather for sporting events or other events, people want to recite wrongly what they entitle the Lord's Prayer. In actuality, it is called the model prayer. The model prayer is that which is a blueprint for the kingdom of God. The Lord's Prayer is when Jesus prayed for his apostles. The model prayer is something that we can use for a pattern something that we can use for an introduction into heavier matters. Amen? That's on our hearts. The Lord's Prayer is when Jesus prayed for his apostles as, as he was about to depart from his earthly ministry. You have to understand that when you look at the model prayer, there are two versions we see one in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. And we see the other, which we are about to look at for this morning, the gospel according to Luke chapter 11. The version in Matthew's gospel has a doxology at the end. The version in Luke's does not have one. The version in Matthew, Matthew, Jesus gives this model in light of the teachings on the mount. Luke's version comes from an observation by his disciples. Lord, teach us how to pray. It's not that his men did not know how to pray. But during this era, each rabbi, and Jesus was a rabbi, he was the master to, amen? amen? But each teacher, each rabbi likes to put their thumbprint on certain portions, Brother Moody, of the Torah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. John the baptizer had his favorite portion of the Torah to pray over. So Jesus, come on, you know scriptures. Before John was even thought of, we have G, amen? Well, he said, before Abraham was, I am. I'm the same I am that met Moses in the burning, amen? You know scripture, don't you? Amen. When we look at Matthew's version with this doxology, what do you mean by the doxology? If you're a Bible student, you will know that Matthew ends, for thou art the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Luke's version does not have this. Earlier, Herbert, earlier, earlier manuscripts, copies of copies of the gospel according to Matthew, did not show a doxology. Man, it wasn't until we got to the codex Byzantine, until we start seeing the doxology starting to appear in the Greek text. Our Father, now you're going to call God Father if you know Him, amen? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be, how come on, how great. How magnificent, yes, sir. Yes. how lifted up yes. is your name. Because yes, when we call on your name, yes. Father, in the midst of our troubles, yes. when we call on you, yes. we expect something to happen. For yes, the old folks used to say, they can feel the prayer wheel yes, start turning. Yes. What else? Fiber. They can feel the and, and Jeremiah don't have anything on this. When he got mad at God and said, I, I ain't going to prophesy no more in his name. But he said, but there's a fire within me. 
I can't keep quiet because it's shut up within my bones. So when we call on you, Father, we expect something to happen. Amen? Amen. Now, of course they knew how to pray. They, they was brought up in a Jewish culture, which, which, which they observed the proceedings, the liturgical met methods in the synagogue. So they understood this. But teach us how to pray. So Jesus says, look, I'm going to teach you. And you're going to communicate you're going to, if you look at the true definition of prayer, it's thinking the thoughts of God. Think, it's thinking the thoughts of God. Don't pull a tech on me. I know Isaiah 55 says, uh, his thoughts are higher than ours. <laughs> his ways are not our ways. <laughs> as even as the heavens are higher than the earth, so is his thoughts than ours. In his ways. But but if you know something about God, remember those old fashioned radios with the vacuum tubes and stuff and the whistle and you you trying to search for your channel, your station and say whistles and stuff. That's what prayer is. See, God allows us to tune in and we tune out all that worldly stuff. And we tune in, you hear all that whistle, then you hit it. Amen. See, God lets you know when you hit it. Amen. So let's, let's focus on this, this, this third verse, the third verse out of 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't pull a tech. I, I know what the script, I know Jesus, Jesus quoted the Old Testament. Man should not live by bread alone, but I, out, out of every word, out of every concept that comes out of them, I, I know that. But in this case, we talk about God providing for us each and every day. Look at it like this. God is our source. God is our sustainment. And God is our salvation. Now, when we look at God being our daily bread, we understand that God is our source of being. Amen? He's our source of living. He's our source of breathing. And he is our source of reasoning. You thought you got up and automatically knew what one plus one is. Guess who gave you that? To even understand. See, we took calculus to say, look, one plus one is two. But how do you know one plus one is two? <laughs> to even understand that. When somebody taps you on your shoulder, what's your name? So you don't sit there. with a glazed eye. God gives you the reason. Regulates your mind when you get up. So you're not wandering around New Circle Road, don't know where you are. You don't think you just get up and you have some regulator in your heart that tells your blood to start pumping now. Guess who does that? Each and every day. See, God just don't set it for a week or a month or a year. See, he sets our mind and regulates it. He touches our heart and fixes it each and every day. We just grown into a custom. Take God for granted. He's going to get me up tomorrow. He's going to get me up next week. And we don't understand that when we go to sleep, there's a fine, look, the medical community tells us a fine, look, when you go to sleep, there's a fine line between death and you waking up the next morning. And God is in control of that fine line. Look, 
heard they used to tell us, really, there's a fine line between those who are considered mentally off balance and those that have the intelligence of Albert Einstein. But God controls this, this, this thin, amen? So God sustains us. He's our source, and he also sustains us. See, we know about the source because his word going all the way back to Genesis says he created man out of the dust of the earth, amen? You know scriptures. And, and, and the scripture says that he breathed into the nostril of man. Put a point there. So this tells us that God created, he's the source. He created the body, the outer shell, and he created the inner shell, the soul. Because the scripture says, then, listen, then man became a living soul. Like my pastor before me, I'm a diaconomist. I believe that man is soul and body. Not a body that happens to have a soul, but a soul that happens to have. We're spiritual creature, amen? Amen. Amen. You hear the term soul brother. <laughs> that's, that's all of us. Because <laughs> man, man is primarily spiritual, and we just happen. Listen, we just happen to have a body. So he breathed. He's the source, Moody. He breathed. So that tells me if Adam became a living soul, that tells me there's a such thing as a dead soul. So he is the source, my brothers and sisters. He sustains us each and every day. Amen? He sustains us and gives us Strength for the word said that the inner man must be renewed, not year by year, not month by month, not week by week, but it must be renewed on a day to day basis. You, you get in the concept? Our daily bread. When you look at the godly versus the ungodly, the ungodly are maintained. The godly are sustained. Maintain me, you just stuck in, you just stuck in neutral. Sustain means someone's got you. Someone's holding you up. Maintain means, well, since I'm in neutral, I can go, I can go forward or backwards. And you better pray for the positive side of being in neutral. Because Jesus is that hookup, and you see those tow truck. They tell you put your put your put your transmission in neutral. Well, since we're in neutral, you better hope Jesus is the tow truck so He can pull you ahead. Amen. And all of us, we were in neutral. At one time, we were in neutral. Not Winchester Towing Company, not AAA, but Jesus, the greatest tow truck of all, gave us a hookup. You ever had a hookup? Jesus ever pulled, come on now, he pulled us out of the miry clay into his marvelous light. The scriptures say we just didn't coast down a hill into grace. Jesus hooked us up. Amen? Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. What is in a day? What's in a day? The scripture according to Peter said a, a, a day to God is like a thousand years and then a thousand years is like a day. But yet Paul says there's trouble in my day. Because Romans 7, he, he ends, oh, wretched man that I am. <laughs> this day, oh, wretched man that I am. This day, who's going to come to my rescue? It's Jesus. 
this day. Amen? Amen. This day. And he sustains me. Not only he regenerated me, not only did he anointed me, but he's going to glorify me because I am, I wish you knew. Jesus said no man can take us. In John chapter 10, the parable of the good shepherd, he said, look, no man can take you out of my father's hand. You're mine. My father gave you. And since I and the father are one, nobody can pluck you out of my hand. Amen? So he sustains us. I like this. He sustains us. Not only he sustains us, but he also is the God of our salvation. Amen? Amen? He is the one who delivers us. He's our source. Amen? He sustains us. Amen? He's also our deliverer. Amen? Job says, well, a man born of a woman is of few days. And full of trouble. Job says, your day may have some trouble. Job said, the days that we have, really it's day by day. It's few. But the few days, full of trouble. Amen? What is in a day? And sometimes my day is filled with trouble. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, our load gets heavy. Amen? Sometimes the load is so heavy, your shock absorber starts to bottom out. Amen? Sometimes our load gets so heavy, they tell us to put 32 PSI in our tires. But sometimes the load gets so heavy, your tires start to spread out. Sometimes we can't tell the day from the night. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus, the bright and morning star, he knows how to eclipse the darkness. For the word said that light was shown into the, you know something about the prologue men. That light shined into the darkness. And the darkness did this, you know, took his finger. Imagine, darkness did this, took his finger. Darkness scratched his head. And darkness couldn't comprehend. <laughs> it couldn't comprehend <laughs> the light. So I've never seen anything like this before. This is the master. This is Jesus. See, the scriptures say he, no, no. The Hebrew, yeah, we see he spoke. Technically, God just thought things into <laughs> He's God. See, we sit down, map out our bills, and map out math problems. We sit down and do this. There's no mapping out with God. He just thought, it's, it's one thought with God. So he can do this with the universe. Just think, his one, see where I'm at. His one thought. Don't you think he can take care of us? Yeah. If he can design the universe. One th no, not, not put the sun here. Put the one thought. It all came out. Don't you think with his one thought, he can fix our problems? Look at it like this. If the death of Jesus saved us, don't you think his resurrection can keep us? Don't you think that? <laughs> you ever thought about that? 
he saves us with his blood, but, but the same blood. It ain't that he got a difference. I don't know what type of, I, I, I don't know. I don't know is it A, B, hurt. I don't know is it old, I'm old negative. I don't know is it old, I, I just don't know. I just know that the type of blood he has, it, it cleans. See, my blood, your blood, you put it on something, it was stained. Jesus' blood, you put, I, I can't understand this. Jesus' blood, you put it on something, it cleans. <laughs> you know, it, it cleanses. <laughs> it cleanses. <laughs> you know, his blood got, what, what was the, when we grew up, Tide XK. It, it cleans. Amen. But when I'm down, he's the one that gets me up. And we have to understand this, give us this day. In this prayer, our daily bread. He's telling us, my brothers and sisters, when time comes of trouble, you have to learn how to steal away. Yes, steal away. Yes, steal away unto Jesus. And he will, in the by and by, amen? Yes. He will get us through. And you know what? Paul says you have to lean on him, and you have to trust on him. And Peter said, take all of your cares. And it says, look, you don't, in the Greek it doesn't say just drop it. In the Greek, trouble's heavy, right? You, you agree? In the Greek it gives a concept, man, we watch a tr uh, uh, track and stuff. Those shot putters, mm -hmm. they put that thing and they heave it. In the Greek it says, take your troubles in like a shot put and heave it yes, to the feet. Amen? Yes, you ever heave your troubles to the feet of Jesus? It's so heavy. Look, you heave it. It ain't light like this piece of paper. You heave. Look, trouble's heavy. Yes. Trouble's worrisome. Amen? Trouble gets you down. So the Greek says you're going to heave it to the feet of Jesus. Amen? Amen. What I like about Jesus, close your eyes. 2,000 years ago, he went to the cross. He told his men at the, at the, at the Lord's Supper, one of you, look. The Last Supper being transformed into the Lord's Supper. He told his men at the Last Supper, one of you guys going to betray me. And I said this last Tuesday, close your mind, close your eyes. He said, one of you is going to betray me. Imagine the men at the table. You know how we say, you know, you fix your lips. You make that sound, that W sound. You know, can you imagine that? Imagine somebody's going to betray <laughs> you. <know? laughs> he went and endured that. He went to the garden and prayed. As you said last week, he was fully man and fully human. We saw the humanity. Look, the garden of Gethsemane was just as a burden as the cross for Jesus. Because in the garden of Gethsemane, he drank the whole cup. They came and arrested him about 2 a.m. Friday morning. He went through judgment hall to judgment hall. Six trials, three ecclesiastical, three civil. They beat on him. They spat on him. They took those whips. Some call it cat or nine tails. They tore his flesh apart to a point where Jesus' own kidneys might have been exposed because they ripped his flesh up. He endured. We didn't do Did you do that? He endured that. He carried the horizontal beam of his own cross until they made Rufus and Alexander's daddy, Simon, 
to carry that. They nailed him, lifting him up until heaven kissed earth. He died to a point where he bore our sins, to a point where his own deity had to separate from his own humanity, to a point where he said, I and the Father are one, so since my deity departed, I feel the Father. So he said, Father, why, look, why have you forsaken me? He endured that, amen? He paid for our sins. He died. Yes, he died. But guess what? He didn't stay dead. On that appointed morning, he got up, shook off grave dust off his feet. He got up, shook the wrinkles out of his gown. He got up and defeated sin. And now that he has got up, we shall get, amen? That's Jesus. Amen. And if you want to be a part of this, my brothers and sisters, please call you. We will share with you this risen Savior, this resurrect. Amen? Amen. May God keep you and God bless you. As we said before, it should be a number on your screen, 859-254-7387. And just call this number. And we will do our best to return the call. But you know what? We're just human. And the line may be busy. And the line can go down because of a storm. But I'm going to tell you who stood in the midst of the storm. It's Jesus. And his line is never busy. So you're going to call us because you dialed the main line, and it wasn't busy for you. Amen and amen. That make, in the words of my pastor, that makes sense? <laughs> okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. So let's stand up and receive the benediction so we can get you skies out. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. For you say in your own word, why shall I tremble? Because for this hour is why I came. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for bearing our sins. You bore it to heaven kiss earth. We thank you. And now you made us free. These things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, grace, mercy, truth, rest, rule, abide in, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.